everyone, it's Andrea and we're here for a quick colour and chat. When you see this, uh, it will be Sunday. I'm actually filming it on Saturday, but it will be up on Sunday because oh, these things take so long for me to, to convert on my computer. So it's a long weekend here in the UK. It's um, what we call the Whitson Bank holiday, which is at the end of May. So we've all got Monday off. Yay. So, oh, I've got a lot on this, this weekend. It's been very, very hot and muggy. We've had, for us, very hot temperatures of, of up to 30 degrees. For instance, in my car the other night, it was 28 and a half. Driving home from work, it was horrendous. But, um, yeah, it was horrible, basically. I don't do very well in the heat. I'm not gonna lie, I don't do very, very well. And I find it very, very difficult in the heat to, um, uh, cope. I, I mean, I don't mind the nice sunny weather, but I'm not very good with the heat. I find it very, very difficult to cope when it's very hot. I mean, like I say, it's all right if you're on a holiday and you're just, oh, you can just go and sit in a swimming pool. But when you're stuck in an office, and yeah, it's air conditioned, but it's there's so many people in there, the air conditioning doesn't really kick in until like lunchtime, by which point everybody's sweltering because it's boiling at eight o'clock in the morning really, so you're all really stuck anyway. Um, I don't really do very well and then I've been sleeping okay, which is great, but Friday night, Saturday morning, we had a big thunderstorm. I love thunder, it doesn't, I don't, I'm not frightened but I quite like thunder and lightning. Um, so we had that, so woke up when that started and it was still very hot and muggy for a while and I just could not get back to sleep for ages uh, because of the heat. Um, yeah, I, I really didn't, <laughs> wasn't very happy. At five o'clock I got up and had a cup of tea and I, I made some toast because I needed I was really hungry. It's been so hot in the evenings, just haven't been eating properly. It's been like egg on toast or something like that, a fried egg on toast or scrambled egg. So Saturday was the first time in ages I had a proper meal and I went to my mum's. Because Paul's out um, and I had uh, beef and chips with my mum and my dad. The dog's not eating because it's so hot as well, so she's a funny dog though. So Saturday I went to the range and got a couple of colouring books. Um, what else did I do? Not a lot. I went to my mum's for tea, fussed the dog. Yeah. It was nice. It's, it's, I mean, the weather. I love it when the the weather's beautiful and it's really sunny and the sky is blue and you just want to oh, sit outside and have a beer. But the heat, nah. I don't like the heat. I'm not good at it. I'm really not good at heat. I I just oh, my mum's the same. So I've got rehearsals for the show this week. Well, I'm not in it, I'm just, I'm just, I'm deputy stage managing it. So that means I will be calling cues to the sound and lights, depending on who it is. If it's Ellie and Dan, they don't need cues. They, they're so good, they just do it, but it's there for them as a backup. And call the actors to the stage. And tomorrow I'm having a run. So I'll be timing it for the director to see how long Act 1 and Act 2 lasts. Um, it'll be the first time that it has been timed. Um, the actors are now booked down. The show opens on the 12th of June and it is uh, The Government Inspector by Mikhail Gugul. Gugul. It's very funny. It is, it is funny. Um, so yeah, it's the last play of the season, so then it's, the theatre breaks up for the summer and they start rehearsing for the next season, so. Whew. 
I got myself a can of cider because it's bank holiday weekend and why not? Ah, oh, so refreshing. I'm not a big drinker, so don't get me wrong, I'm really not a big drinker. I don't drink a lot at all. But um, I do like a can, uh, I do like a cider, especially in the hot weather. Um, been reading a little bit. Always in the summer, I never read as much. I just can't concentrate on it in the heat. I really, really struggle in the summer with reading. I have been reading a book. I am currently reading a book called The Last Oracle. It's really good. And I sort of been, I read a bit of it in bed last night when it was so hot I couldn't get back to sleep. But whereas before I was reading like a book every other day, I think I've only read about four or five books again this month. It's just because it's too hot. There's other things to do. I'm doing this show. So I'm actually out a lot in the week. Obviously I'm colouring. So, as you can see, I'm colouring as well. So obviously when I'm colouring, I'm not reading. Um, and But this always happens this time of year. I get really ahead on my Goodreads challenge right up to around end of April, beginning of May. And then it just, it drops off. I'm like, oh, I don't, I just don't read as much. So, I don't worry about it because I know it will pick up again at some point. So, and I'm enjoying the colouring, I'm enjoying doing something a bit different and doing all the, some of the colouring longs and looking at all the different books people have, wanting them myself and different art supplies. I mean, I'm, I can't draw to save my life. I really am not a drawer. But the thought of, you know, being able to color is fantastic. I love being, I love coloring. It gives me something to do in the evenings. Paul doesn't moan because I'm not ignoring him. When I read, I'm in like a world of my own a complete world of my own. It's like nothing else exists. So he doesn't like it because obviously I'm not talking to him. He did colour something uh, in the Star Wars book the other week and he really enjoyed it. He says, yeah, I see why you like doing it because you really are It take, your mind is blank of everything else. You can't think of anything because you're thinking of the colour and what else you're going to be, be do, doing. So he really enjoyed it. So I'm not very good at skin, but I just like colouring people in. So at least they're not like when you used to colour people in with um, felt pens when you were a kid and they were really bright pink. That was awesome. So yeah, as you know, I've changed the title of my page to Andrea's Attic because it's not just about books anymore. It's about all sorts of different things and hobbies. And I think it's more in keeping with what I do. And I'm fine with that. I mean... I know some people are just books. I mean, again, a lot of the booktube channels diversify into other areas when they're ready. And I just don't see the point in having multiple channels and doing one for booktube and one for colouring and one for this. I just want to put it all on. It's all part of me. It's all part of my life. So I am a reader, a colourist. I am a photographer. I missed her bangles there. I am... A worker, I'm a collector, 
so yeah I mean I love I have so many different hobbies that why wouldn't I have a channel that encapsulates all of them so yeah that's why I have set up a group on Facebook and I will put the link below if you want to join you're under no obligation I don't mind you must join it by the way please join please please join um, it will be a closed group you can find it but you won't be able to see anything unless you join I haven't really done anything on it yet so there's nothing on there but it is a color in one and the reason for that is I want to do color alongs but obviously I need somewhere to post there's a gap for that one that's up this end is it oh that's it right at the end um you need to have somewhere to post the pictures people do so I have set up a Facebook group I will leave a link but if you don't want to use the link you can search just under Andrea's Attic Colouring book group or something it is I'm not actually sure what I've called it well that's a bit stupid isn't it and it's got Andrea's Attic in it it's colouring group it's Andrea's Attic colouring group so if you want to please join and uh, I'll be posting in there because I do want to do a colouring a colour along at some point I've got so many colouring books now I think it would just be nice to to do a colour along with everybody um, and have my gr own group so and obviously this is going to take a while this picture because of the the bricks so I'll probably finish this off camera at some point I just wanted to do a bit more of it on here before I started anything else so this one I've used my Prismacolors on and um, some um, pencils that I bought in office outlet which uh, some neon ones by JTEC there. and of course I've used some Le Derwent metallic now these are water soluble but I haven't um, added water with them but that was just for their trousers because I wanted them to have that funny sort of 80s metallic -y look so And Monday, who knows what we'll be doing because it's, it, as usual, British bank holiday weather is not the best. It does always rain. Which isn't brilliant, but uh, I guess we had thunder and lightning the other night. I loved that. I just lay in bed listening to the thunder overhead and watching the lightning. It was, it was really nice. I, I, mean, I like it. I do like the I mean, I haven't posted as many videos and I haven't posted on my blog much in the last few weeks simply because I have been working so much. We are so busy at work that, uh, oh. I mean, that's how I was able to buy the Prismacolors because I did so much overtime. I had a lot of money left and I got them from Amazon and they were uh, like £86 for the 150 set and I really like them I really do they're really really good pencils I'm really enjoying using them I am so sweaty I'm gonna have to have a shower later my hair is all sweaty but that's the cause it's so freaking not I am not good in the heat I am not gonna lie I hate the heat not that one this one then
so Whew, it is very warm in here I mean I mean it's I know it's nothing like the temperatures that you get in Australia or some parts of the states but you know what for me I am dying in this weather I am seriously suffering So I'm just going to do some stuff on their glasses, I'll find my pencil sharpener, which was here a minute ago, there it is. So again, these are the Derwent ones. Better, thank you. And I'm just going to put in some... Because I am addicted to colouring supplies, as you all know. We all are, aren't we? Let's be honest. Somebody has something, we want to try it. Um, and it is usually just the cost that keeps us from buying things, but a Colourful Life, Anna A Colourful Life did some really good videos of some budget supplies this week that uh, look good and one of the things she showed was Faber-Castell water crayons, oh, they look really good you know they're slightly cheaper than the O2s but she said they perform really well and they looked really good I had a look at them on Amazon and they're like 30 odd quid in the UK and I'm like oh okay I think I'll just get the ink tenses for now So yeah, there we go. And sunglasses. So we just put a little Oh, this is actually quite good fun actually um yeah I'm gonna do their hair next I think I'll just take a slug of a slug of cider and for the hair I don't know what colors mm. I am going to, now they've got neon colours in the prismas as well so I'm picking up the neon pink just to see what this one looks like as well. Haven't used this one yet at all. So I'm just, just sharpen it up. And I'm just going to put some pink in her hair. Oh yeah that's nice. Especially at the ends. It's a lovely pink actually. I think we'll put in a dark yellow. It's kind of like, I 
quite like this canary yellow for Bond. It's a really nice colour. I like this yellow. Right, I'm going to stop there and change my battery, so I will be back in a second. Right, there we go. I've changed the battery and I'm back. Um, so yeah, so it's Bank Holiday Monday this week. It's the last one now until August. That's a long time. Although I do have a week off in June, I won't be around much that week. Because it's my birthday and we always do something. We go into West Wales. For a few days, which is always nice. It's nice to get away from. Always nice to get away from, uh, for a while to the seaside. So we're going down there for a bit. And then, um, so that'll be a load of photography stuff, which I never ever, and this is terrible because it's true, I take so many photographs and I just, I'm just not doing anything with them. If like I took a load of photographs in London and I still haven't worked on them, and that was ages ago. I still got film to be developed from last year. And um, I, it's just laziness. It's just me being lazy, I'm afraid, and it's really bad. But it's one of those things, isn't it? It's not the end of the world. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do, it's a... Um, it's the wrong one. Uh, it's a... Uh, I'm just going to lean over now to get a different colour. Nope. Is it this one? Am I leaning right in front of you or am I over the top? It's fine. Nah, don't want that one either. What kind of am I looking for? Have a look. Use my colour swatches. Hee hee hee. Um, let's have a look. Mm. Oh. Right, okay, I'll use the one out of this then. Green. I just think that the 80s were very colourful. just lost one of my blending pencils so all right, I'll pick it up in a minute. Luckily I have another. So yeah they I mean they used to have really weird colours in their hair and What colour is this? This is ochre. Burnt ochre. Oh yeah. So 
so I love the 80s I still love the 80s I love the music I still listen to the music why are you on about kid you still do yes I do I'm terrible with the 80s music. I can just sit there and listen to it all night long. Because, yeah, I am a kid of the 80s. It's Sienna Brown. I like to put different colours. Because not every, your hair isn't a block of colour. I mean, like, my natural colour is brown with red and gold in it, so... Now, I know some people use henna on skin tone. I think it's a bit dark, but that's because I haven't tried it yet, so. It might be actually really nice to go on a skin. I'd have to practice, I think. That's one thing I'm not very good at. And, um, yeah, as much as I love people, I love her 80s hair. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> so now we've got to decide what colours to do with their clothes. She's got some sort of buckly thing here. We're not actually sure what it is. So in the 80s we used like would wear really bright colours. So, I think, what's this red? This is Scarlet Lake. I am going to do a bit of Scarlet Lake. See what that looks like. I'm going to do that one on this one. a nice colour actually. So in the 80s we wore really bright clothes. Went big for neons. Loved the synthesizer. Or oh, you had the new romantic look, in the early 80s, all, all classic looks. But the 80s is also a time of well, what happened in the 80s in the UK was where we had Charles and Diana getting married. And the minor strikes, which were terrible. Burley Moor came down at the end of the year. Back to the Future came out. Classic film. Love Back to the Future. We had Adam and the Ants. We had Pet Shop Boys. They're still going. Wham. Duran Duran. Phil Oakley, Kylie and Jason, Neighbours, <laughs> EastEnders started, what else? Diana Dawes died sadly. Yeah, the 80s, classic decade, well I think every decade's a classic if you look at it. I remember summers seemed to last forever. I 
walking down to the river. That's a bit of a belt actually there. Walking down to the river and um, catching tadpoles. Green one. I've lost it on it here. <laughs> Oops. Um, what else did we do? Played, played all sorts of things. Like, you know, we played the A team. Big in the 80s. We played Fame. Yeah. We did lots of stuff. It was great. We were allowed to wander around on our own. There was no. There was danger, of course there was, there's always been danger, but it wasn't so, I think, prevalent, you know. You didn't hear about it so much. It wasn't, the media wasn't what it is today. It started in the 80s, but it wasn't as bad. So... It was, uh, excuse me, sniffling. This heat is killing me. It does, it's terrible. Like I said, I'm not good with the heat. But, uh, I can remember going walks down to the river on our own. I mean, my older brother was there, but even he wasn't older. I mean, he was he's five years older than me, so if I was ten, he was fifteen, so. But, you know, and um, I mean, the park was actually next door to our house at the time, which was great because Mum could just lean out the window and say, "Come on, time for tea. Come in, it's getting late." We we're like, "Yes, Mum. All right, Mum." But you know, but we we knew how far we could push the boundaries, and we didn't push any further. Because there would be consequences. There doesn't seem to be consequences. But when there are, they're horrendous. Yeah, you know, we knew if we were misbehaved, we'd be punished. But yeah, you know, times change and things happen, and it's not the world's not what it was. And. The next generation of children will say, oh, it was better in my day, we could do this and this and this. And that happens with every generation. It's quite funny to hear my dad talk about when he was growing up and how, you know, they, they, they used to play in the streets and there were no cars in the streets when he grew up because, you know, he was born in 1940. And that, oh, the first car on the street was my dad's and that wasn't until 1955. I was 15 when he got that, so it would have been about 55, 56. So... It does show, you know, how it's changed. And he said, he used to walk for miles to school. And they used to ride their bikes from Bristol to Western Supermare, which is quite a distance. But that's what they did, you know, they didn't. But there wasn't so much traffic on the road, so it was safer for them to do things like that. There wasn't any traffic then, hardly. So it was just... I mean, you barely had a one-car family, let alone two or three cars like we have today. Because everybody in the family's got to drive. Well, of course they don't, but they seem to want to. I don't blame him. I wouldn't give up driving. No, no, he doesn't drive. He doesn't want to drive. He doesn't like driving. But me, I, I love my driving. I love my car. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stop driving. Rouge. Calm in red. Hmm? Nice. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't stop driving. 
I love to drive. I like the freedom. I really do. This isn't the best colouring paper, I will say, because it does tend to leave big white gaps. Unless you press really hard, and I don't really want to do that. So we are, we've reminisced about the 80s. <laughs> of course, I was only really young, so. I didn't get to wear the really cool clothes. It was, you know. I was more interested in it when I got to um, college and stuff like that. But I will admit, I always loved looking at the clothes in uh, my mum's catalogues. But I wouldn't look at like you know, the kids' clothes or the boring clothes. I'd be like in the evening dresses looking at the glamorous stuff. It was modelled by the, the cast of Dallas and Dynasty because, oh, I loved sparkles even then. So. And funny enough, I can actually remember that um, the catalogue my mum had had a collection of clothes by a designer named William Trevia, who actually designed the clothes for 20th Century Fox when Marilyn was there in the 50s and I can remember thinking how glamorous it was and this was before I really got into Marilyn and I just loved his designs and therein lies the tale of how I discovered Marilyn in 1987 when I was 13 and uh, well what happened was I was always aware of Marilyn. There'd been um, a commercial with a Marilyn look like in it, advertising some perfume. Then of course there was a British pop star Marilyn who, who modelled himself after her. So I was always aware of her presence. So it's not like she suddenly appeared out of nowhere and I decided to like her. She'd always, I'd always been aware of her Um, and then at one point, it was a bit, it would have been August 1987 because that was the 25th anniversary of her death. They were showing Gentlemen for Blondes on. It would have been during the, the holidays because um, she, she died in August. And it was on, I think, 11, it was around 11 o'clock at night. It was quite late for a 13 year old back in the day. And my mum and dad went to bed early. My dad obviously worked for a living. And I said to my mum, is it alright if I stay up and watch this film? And she was like, yeah, keep the sound down, turn everything off when you, when you finish. And yeah, yeah, of course I will. And so I sat there on the floor in front of the TV. We didn't have a video recorder at this point because we didn't have a huge amount of money. Video recorders. And there's another story, isn't there? Um, and I sat in front of it, the TV, watching this film. I, and it's not a hugely long film, and I just sat there cross-legged in front of Gentleman for Blondes, watching Marilyn and Jane. And I was gobsmacked at how beautiful they both were, but especially Marilyn. And I thought, yes, please, this woman is gorgeous. And then I went out and I bought a small poster and postcard of her. And uh, it started from there, really. I mean, I didn't really start collecting properly until around 1990, but... Um, you know, I had, I had a couple of posters and I had a T-shirt that my dad bought. And the um, poster and postcard. I mean, I was into other things as well. 1987, I was into pop music and the Pet Shop Boys and 
messing around with my mates and stuff so it was only later that it really 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 got into it so so I don't know how long this video is but I'm pretty sure it's about 40 minutes now because it's in two parts so that's where I'm going to leave it for today because I want to have a shower because I am sweating cobs <laughs> it's so hot I can't get over how hot it is still so I'm actually going to go and have a shower while this film is converting so next time you see this picture it'll probably be finished i hope um and it'll be hopefully in my may coloring wrap up so like i said i will leave a, a link to my uh coloring group down below if you want to join please do you don't have to i would like you to um so please add yourselves and uh, i will hopefully see you very very soon that's all from me today